There's a lot going on over in China stock markets as the shares have been entering a free fall in recent weeks. Now there are concerns that the Chinese stock collapse could set off another round of currency wars as Beijing takes various measures to shore up the market. Let's take a closer look. Topping the business headlines these days is China's stock market and its extreme volatility. Despite government rescue efforts, shares in China recorded their largest one-day fall in eight years at over 8 percent on Monday. Beijing has been struggling to contain the market route, announcing earlier this week that it's prepared to buy shares to stave off instability. It also said it will increase flexibility of the yuan and allow the currency to trade in a wider range against the dollar. Experts say such a move may be a sign that the government is ready to allow its currency to depreciate further, which could have a major impact on the relative competitiveness of neighboring countries. Could this set off a fresh round of currency wars, and how will this all affect Korea? And to tell us more about this, we're now joined by Professor Kwak Ju Young from Yonsei University. Welcome to the program. Hello. All right, so Chinese shares have been sliding, but then it rebounded on Wednesday, just showing how much volatility there is in the China's market right now. But what's the situation looking like right now at the moment? Yeah, the stock price in China has dropped for a month, and uh, but last week it was a particularly sh uh, sharp decline. Mm -hmm. The fall on Monday 27th was the even biggest uh, in uh, over the recent eight years. Chinese government intervened to rekindle an investor enthusiasm, but still the market continues the downturn, uh, although uh, today it went up uh, slightly by 3%. All right. Well, the Chinese government has been proactively engaging to contain instability. Mm -hmm. How effective do you think this has been? Well, the Chinese government had made two types of actions, both positive action and negative action. Positive action uh, intends to support and encourage the stock market performance. For example, the government increased subsidy uh, to help securities authority uh, play its role of large institutional buyer. At the same time, negative action uh, includes prevention of short stock selling if the selling amount is too large. Also, the Chinese government is conducting a nationwide investigation on suspected stock price manipulation. So, when the Securities Authority introduced several supporting policies, in fact, the market bounced back. But the problem was the Chinese investors perceive it as the right timing to sell. So, unfortunately, those policies backfired. All right. Well, the market route has created a <laughs> sense of anxiety among the China's public. And what kind of effects has the country seen so far? Uh, well, we we need to understand the structure of Chinese stock market. Chinese stock market is characterized as individual investor driven as 80% of transactions were made by individual investors. It's a big contrast to the United States or Europe where uh, large institutional buyers are leading the market. So. What, uh, how do the Chinese people feel about it? Of course, they are panic, obviously. Uh, the investor suicide cases due to a sharp fall in the stock market continued. And what is worse, combined with inflation, uh, the recent situation may go beyond the stock market thing, even threatening the legitimacy of the Chinese Communist Party. That's what the Chinese Communist Party is most uh, afraid of. All right, well then, how is the slide in Chinese shares affecting the Korean economy? Uh, well, the sharp decline in the Chinese stock market, all together with unstable U.S. stock market, uh, dragged down the Korean stock market for a recent few days. But yesterday, Kospi index bounced up, right? So right now, but it's not clear whether the Kospi will continue to rise or the such a rise is nothing but a temporary thing. Another issue is the Chinese stock market is not entirely responsible for the recent fall of the Kospi because the Kospi prices stayed very fairly high for recent period. So the Kospi prospect will need more explanations related to the domestic situation as well, apart from Chinese market. All right. Well, the problem is, though, if the situation in China gets worse, then it's obviously going to have chilling influence on the global economy. I mean, have you seen any of this happening already? Uh, well, the economic slowdown in China beclouds the world economic outlook. Money pulled out from emerging markets is going to the U.S. dollar. So U.S. dollar is now the strongest uh, ever since 2003. In contrast, emerging market currencies such as Indonesia, Rupee, uh, South Africa, Rand, or the Brazil hair have been at the lowest value. 
uh, not only emerging markets, but some the non-emerging markets also suffer from the currency de depreciation caused by China. Australia, for example, have heavily uh, relied on trades with China, and the, the gloomy Chinese stock market caused a pessimistic prospect of the Australian economy. Same thought that the uh, declining Chinese economy would decrease the demands of natural resources uh, triggered a turn down in the international commodity market. All right. Well, and as we just saw in the report, Beijing plans to increase flexibility mm -hmm. in the renminbi and also allow the currency to trade in a wider range against the dollar. What does this all mean? Well, due to the limited range of the currency exchange change, uh, the Chinese yuan, in fact, has been the least weak among the emerging market currencies. So allowing uh, more ranges for the currency exchange change will enable further depreciation on the Chinese yuan. Uh, China is a global factory, but the uh, sluggish global economy uh, decreased the demands, the customers of the made in China goods. So the recent fall in stock market triggered the Chinese government to make an action uh, by attempting to weaken the Chinese yuan for export uh, promotion. All right, then this must be bad news for Korea's already uh, sluggish exports. Uh, sure, uh, definitely. Uh, it's going to be a double torture, say. Mm, double torture. Ex export mm. decrease and the uh, price competitiveness decrease. The relevant data has demonstrated that the China export-oriented Korean firms uh, have been less profitable over time. So the Korean exporting firms are kindly advised to diversify exporting markets, moving up to high-value product in order to cope with the changing in uh, change in the global economic layout. All right. Well, considering that Beijing is Seoul's biggest trading partner, mm -hmm. uh, I guess whatever happens in China will do will have a lasting effect on the Korean economy mm -hmm. as well. So, what are some factors that we should keep an eye on from here on out? Well, overall, what's happening in China? is the is change stock market is to remove bubble and to restructure economy. If I borrow the Chinese government term, that's back to normal. Mm. So uh, other macroeconomic indicators uh, began to flicker a long time ago, mm. but only the stock market index was flying high. That was very far from being normal. So in principle, uh, we should appreciate China's painful mm. process to back to normal. Mm. Uh, I would suggest a soft landing scenario where Chinese government would intervene more deeply and more extensively. Well, they have the capacity, it's state capitalism, and they have a past experience of maneuvering soft lending successfully. And further, although it may be a disappointment to the Chinese government, but Chinese economy is still growing at 7% every year. So, but uh, well, there is a still high possibility of the continuous fall in the stock market. But it is, again, it's the process to go back to normalization. Well, we hope that the normalization process would not give uh, less pain to the Chinese people. The economy between Korea and China is very close. So we don't want radical, radical change to happen in China. It's going to be a big smash on the Korean economy. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for your insight today, Professor. Thank you for inviting me. And that wraps it up for today. But we'll be back tomorrow at the same time, same place. So don't forget to tune in then. Thanks for watching and see you soon.